and a jack. And four. Jack goes to the day nursery. He's been going there since we moved here. My son attended the day nursery. I'm a student at Fenwick High School in Oak Park. I'm a senior. My granddaughter uh, attended the day nursery. She's since graduated and is now in second grade, but I still continue to volunteer because I believe in the mission. I'm an alum, so this is my first schooling experience. And when I was in high school, I was a volunteer as a teacher's aide for all four years of high school. And then when I was in college, I was a Spanish teacher for all four years of college. We've lived in Oak Park since July of 2016. Our son Carter went to the day nursery for one year. I went to the day nursery. The day nursery is a melting pot where I first met a lot of my friends. It's a lot of diverse people and it gives everybody a chance to be friends. It's a preschool, it's a, it's a day nursery, it's all these things, but it's also really a center for the community. It knits so many families together. The languages, it's our cultures, it's our customs. When you walk into a day nursery classroom, you see a very diverse population. That is Oak Park. The day nursery was founded in 1912 by a group of women as a service to the community to be supported by the community. It was a memorial to Elizabeth Charlton, who had been very interested in early childhood education. There was a social service agency in Oak Park that had identified the need for a safe place for women, particularly recently immigrated women, to put their children while they were employed which in 1912 was sort of unusual, but these were recently immigrated women. Often their husbands were unskilled and had difficulty supporting financially. These women took on domestic jobs, such as a laundress or a cook or a housekeeper. And then there was a mother support group fairly early on, probably at the end of the first decade, giving mothers training of sorts including since so many were recent immigrants and being able to speak and write English. And then after a few more decades, the fathers said, you know, we have issues we'd like to talk about too. So a father's group was formed. There is a parent group called our PAC group, which are our parents, which is sort of a continuation of all that. So the whole Randolph Street frontage, which this house pretty much occupies, became what it is today in the late 20s. And they hired the architect White to do the work, who was a protege of Frank Lloyd Wright. He had worked in his studio. It appears to me that it was always the intent in working with that architect, that it be viewed and configured in such a way that it had that feeling of a home and a house because that's what they had been in previously. And they thought, especially when you're dealing with children of this age, rather than it being very institutional, that children would feel more comfortable and acclimate better if they felt comfortable in the setting in which they were cared for. Ernest Hemingway's father, Dr. Hemingway, volunteered his services from really within the first year and for decades after as a physician who cared for the children of the nursery. Initially, when the day nursery was founded in 1912, there was a church who gave $200, Pilgrim, and then 19th Century Women's Club gave 300. The other mainstay was to be the community, which they sold memberships to the nursery for a dollar a year. There were businesses that sometimes would put a box out, you know, at Christmas time or whatever and did small donations, give a portion of, of sales of Christmas cards or something to the nursery. And since 1912, the Day Nursery has been a trailblazer in early childhood education and care for children of working families. 
for lack of better terms, we break the rules. In a world where early childhood educators leave after a year or two, our teachers are here for long 10 years. Our average length of stay is over nine years, and that's unheard of in early childhood. In a world where the state of Illinois requires basic coursework to be an early childhood educator, all of our teachers have bachelor's or master's degrees. We're not afraid to be different, and everybody has a purpose, and everybody is, is important. The day nursery really built them up as good citizens, as good students, as really good people. The tone was set as soon as you walked in the door of, you know, this is about the business, this is love. The food cooked on site by a, a cook, and the parents got to sample that as well. You just felt they were in very, very good hands here. I think I found my true calling, and that's in nutritional cooking. Our food is prepared fresh daily. So in comparison to other schools, we're not catered. So the kids are having their food prepared fresh. It's local. And we try to make it organic when we can be. We do a breakfast, a midday snack, a lunch, and an afternoon snack. Nutrition is important in early childhood education because we want them to develop into healthy children and adults. Early childhood education is important the same way a foundation is important for a house. Early childhood education is the foundation of every human being's success in life. And with their brain development, it's that first five years that's so crucial. So to provide them with social emotional skills, with the opportunity to be part of a larger group, to learn how to share, to learn how to problem solve, to learn how to solve issues without violence. It's all things that, that happen in the first five years of life, and you can't take that back, and you have difficulty doing it later in life. We definitely meet the children where they are. We teach the whole child instead of just focusing on one area. Well, my teaching style is a little bit of old school mixed in with a little bit of love. I firmly believe that, first of all, every child can learn, regardless of their background, regardless of their ability level. They may learn differently, they may learn at a different pace, but they can learn. However, as a teacher, I can't do it alone. I firmly believe it takes a village, it takes the village at school, it takes the village at home, and it takes the village of the surrounding community. that parents are essential to the success of their child's experience here. I've worked in the field for over 25 years. I've worked in both public schools, private schools, nonprofits, and something that's really special here are the families. Putting families together that have never met and they've become great friends and their children become great friends and now it's just a larger community. So it's not just watching children and providing child care, it's family building and community building. The Day Nursery is helping build the kind of world that we want Carter to grow up in. So actually, I'm trained as a licensed psychologist. One of my areas of research is on the autism spectrum. And of course, whatever you want to call it, I ended up having a child on the spectrum, which was a bit of an, uh, a surprise occurrence. And everyone always tells me he's lucky to have a dad like that. And in some respects, I definitely understand that because I had an eagle eye looking for the right place to make sure that Carter was in a setting where they could actually mold and develop his positive attributes and then help him with some of the things that he struggles with. And the day nursery was the perfect fit in that regard. As soon as I saw it and I, I met the people there and I understood their training and I saw them interact with Carter and then seeing that over the first few weeks, 
there was no doubt in my mind that this was the perfect place for a child that was struggling with those things and also to cultivate the positive attributes that he has. And over the year, they didn't disappoint. They were uh, an exceptional program and environment and it's hard to find for a child who's so high functioning. You know, a lot of people wouldn't even know that, he, that he's on the spectrum. What do you want to be when you grow up? A teacher. You want to be a teacher when you grow up? A kindergarten teacher. That's exciting. <laughs> you want to help kids learn? Oh, can I actually get my toys all the way to my school? You want your toys at your school? Yeah, for yeah. somebody to play with it when I'm a teacher. Oh. oh, you want to bring your toys to share so that they can play with it while you teach them? Well, that's very generous. <laughs> My granddaughter Aurora is a, is a wonderful, vibrant child who just loves to learn and read. And first thing she does in the morning, even before her parents get up, is open a book. I think part of that is uh, when I used to bring her here, because I would drop her off each morning, she'd go to the little library and she'd pick out a book and want to read with me. Right now, she's in the second grade and is reading at a fourth grade level, and I think the stay nursery certainly gave her the foundation to know what is expected of her, but also how people treat her. I get to talk about you. <laughs> so Jack is a very curious uh, boy, and he's he's also very thoughtful, and you know can be very quiet sometimes until you get to know him, and then you realize he's very talkative, and there's a lot going on in this brain right here, and so it's really important for us to find a place for Jack where the teachers could understand that and coax it out of him, and he wouldn't sort of be in a position where he was the quieter kid kind of over here in the corner. Um, and so I think we found that, you know, I think his teachers engaged him really well and they've got this great playground in the backyard that uh, Jack really loves a lot, don't you? Can you say what your favorite part is? Say my favorite part is? Playing outside. Can you repeat the question like that? Say my favorite part is? Playing outside. <laughs> <laughs> we tried. My best friend now to this day, I remember, you know, having the best time with her here and then we also volunteered together here in high school. I think the day nursery is unique in the sense that you're always connected no matter how many years out you are. The day nursery to me is like a, it's like a second family. And it's helped me to be the person I am today. I want to get into college, hopefully get some scholarships. I want to find my passion. I want to be surrounded by family, be surrounded by close friends, have like enough money, I don't need a lot of money, but have enough money to live, but just find my passion and live by people that, uh, that love me and I love them. These kids that are at the Day Nursery, they're the future that's going to be in Oak Park. If the Day Nursery ceased to exist, I'm concerned that our community wouldn't know what they had lost until it was gone. Well, our building, while it's a historic landmark, it's a it's a hundred years old. It, it is a blessing and a curse, and structurally, we could use some some help with that. We could use help with offering our teachers opportunities for pay equity. We don't serve infants and toddlers, and the need for infant toddler quality care is astronomical. Currently, there are not enough spaces for our working families in this community, and I wish we could help support those families. Having a historical landmark that houses the program is extremely expensive. We cook all of our own meals. If food costs go up, we don't raise our prices. We have to figure out a way to fundraise to make that gap close. And that's just in food. But that happens if there's a crack in our 
perimeter wall or our ceiling starts to leak in a room that isn't even a classroom. But at the end of the day, we need money to keep the doors open. The day nursery is a mirror of Oak Park's values. Everybody cares about the interconnectivity between the different aspects of our communities, whether it's our early childhood education programs, our public schools, our after-school programs, our community-based political activities, everything connects. Investing in your community's children cannot be underestimated. A lot of these issues, including the achievement gap in our own great Oak Park community, can be addressed by investing in our early childhood education programs and focusing on our youngest learners. For a very long time, early childhood education was the Cinderella stepchild of education. Not a lot of funds, not a lot of resources, not a lot of understanding of what actually happens. And what we know now is from zero to five, the milestones and the amount of learning that a child engages and embraces is far greater than any other age group that there is. And I think that it's time that the rest of the world knows what early childhood educators know. That zero to five is, is critical. Studies show that the return on investment in early childhood is more than tenfold. And if we can even minimize that achievement gap just ever so slightly, the trajectory is amazing. On a daily basis, there is an absolute bubbling of activity, but also a, a quiet structure to the place that makes you understand that learning is happening in these quiet moments. It is so inspirational to me that the day nursery has changed, but yet stayed the same. The children still go there every day. The meals still get cooked in the kitchen. Parents still pick them up every day. People are learning and changing and growing. And just like back in the day at the day nursery when they used to do English as a second language classes for families they were serving, you know, we are meeting the needs of our parent groups in a myriad of different ways today. Educating them about the dangers of, you know, too much screen time. You know, the needs may have shifted, but so much of it is the same. Hang on. Hang on. Can you guys smile?